Einstein looked in detail at the absorption and emission of light, and so let's consider that now. Uh, he identified three contributions to transitions between energy states, stimulated absorption, spontaneous emission, and stimulated emission. All right, so let's take a look at, um, at those three processes. Here's one energy state, here's a higher energy state here, and what one can do is take a system from a low energy state and put it here into a high energy state and in the spectroscopies we consider so far this has to do with electromagnetic radiation interacting with the system. This is called stimulated absorption In other words, the system is stimulated to go from a low energy to a high energy state with interaction of the interaction of the system with light. Then once the system is up in this high energy state, it can then decay spontaneously to the low energy state, and this is called spontaneous emission. And that just happens without any stimulus at all. Systems normally want to go from high energy to a low energy state, and that just happens spontaneously. And that was uh, known, that sort of makes sense. You put a system up to high energy state, then go to low energy state. But what's really interesting is that you can also go from the high energy state to the low energy state, a process called stimulated, stimulated emission. So just as you can uh, interact a system with light and stimulate the absorption, so too can you interact uh, with the system at a high energy state and stimulate the emission. This gives rise to lasers. All right, let's uh, take a look at a laser. In a laser, what you need is a what's called a population inversion. Normally, and we'll learn more about this in statistical thermodynamics, you have more uh, systems in a low energy state, this is energy states going up this way, more uh, systems in a low energy than a high energy state. What you can do is pump, so-called pump the system, so you get this transitory uh, inversion, population inversion, where now you have more molecules in a high energy state than you do in the low energy state. And Einstein said that if you have this system, you can stimulate uh, these molecules or these systems, uh, their molecules were chemists, to go to the low energy state. And that gives rise to a laser. So let me just draw a schematic diagram of the laser. On this end of the laser, you have a 100% reflecting mirror. And on this side, you have, say, a 95% reflective mirror. And here you have something else. We'll call this the pump. So this is to take the system from this configuration to this configuration. So the way a laser works is that you pump, so you uh, temporarily create these uh, population inversion. And then say um, a, a photon comes and it uh, goes this way and bounces back and then goes this way and bounces back. These two mirrors are parallel and so we have photons going back and forth. Each time a photon goes through the system it can stimulate the emission of light. So you got emission and now you got more photons going back and forth. As long as you can keep pumping up those uh, uh, molecules to a high energy state you can have just photons going back and forth here, going back and forth, and as they go through that system, they're going to stimulate more photons, and they bounce back and stimulate more photons, and then here you have a 95%, so about 5% of them come out. And the advantage of lasers is that, first of all, they can be very powerful, but secondly, they're very monochromatic. They only have a very narrow range of wavelengths that they emit and laser pointers and all those things base, uh, work base, basically on this same process, although laser pointers use uh, solid state lasers. Uh, Einstein, uh, actually a very good student, one of the best students I've ever had, taught him everything he knew. Stimulated uh, absorption, spontaneous emission, and stimulated emission, which gives rise to lasers.